Hi everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Table Talk. I'm Olivia Weasler with the Star Herald and today we have Jordan Dietrich of the City of Scotts Bluff and Richard Castro with Crossroads Music. So I was just wondering if you guys could start off by telling me a little bit about um, Bands on Broadway. That's coming up here pretty soon. Yeah, definitely. So Bands on Broadway, this is the third year. Uh, it started in 2019. We have a small committee of six people. Richard and I are two of them. Uh, the first year we had a six week concert series. Uh, last year we did seven week and this year we're actually going to extend it to an eight week concert series. Uh, and basically it's a, a free event to the citizens to come down to the 18th Street Plaza um, in Scotts Bluff and, and just listen to some music, get some food truck food, uh, have some beer and, and just have some fun during the summer. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about how you guys go about selecting the bands. Is there like some way you decide who who plays or, or how you go about recruiting them or how does that work? That's not... <clears throat> we're trying to get... We start off with local bands, mm -hmm. okay? We try to get as many local bands as we can, but we try to get out of town bands. So it depends on their schedules. You got to catch these bands as they're traveling through okay. to get a better deal, mm -hmm. to get some outside bands. So what we do is we try to fill the schedule with bands from out of town that we can get and then the spots that are open is where we fill in the local bands. Okay. And so we can get a variety, a little bit of everything. So for sure. Pretty much how we do that. So tell me a little bit about what the lineup is for this um, this summer. This summer we've got on June twenty fourth we have three local bands: Acrylic Riffs, which is a jazz band; uh, Brindlemeyer is a local rock band. As with always, seen there's, they're both local rock bands. And then July 1st, we have High Horses and the Victory Underground, which are both country country rock bands. July 8th, we have Avid Discord and Float Like a Buffalo. Avid Discord is a local band that's kind of a reggae-ish kind of, I don't okay. know how to describe them other than that. Um, <laughs> Float Like a Buffalo is a seven-piece band with horns in it, really a high-energy band out of Colorado. Mm. Uh, they do well. We've had them last year and this year again. The Greendales on July 15th is a local band, which is kind of a... Americana, I guess they would call that. Ellie Venable is from Texas. She's a blues guitar singer. Okay. That happened to be in the area, so we got her. She was going to be in Colorado, so we got her to come down. Nice. Uh, Area 308, a local rock band, Luke Mills. Uh, is a country artist who's going to be here on July 22nd. Out of uh, eastern Nebraska. Okay. On July 29th, we have Caspin, which is a single artist, and he's out of the Casper area. Uh, Church of Cash is a Johnny, Johnny Cash tribute band out of Minnesota, which we got on because they're going to be an alliance oh. the night after, so we got a good deal on them. Uh, August 5th, Ole McCracken and Graham Good and the Painters are both out of Colorado. First time for them down here. Um, I've, I've seen one of the videos on them, good video, good music, um, kind of a rockish band and another band with horn section that's High energy band. Cool. August twelfth, August twelfth, we have Roger Dodger and Loaded Dice, two locals, both rock bands. So we close out the the season with two locals, and so we end, we start with locals and end with locals. And nice. We have a few in between, so okay. try to get everybody involved. Yeah. For sure. So tell me how like are there certain genres you look for, or is it just kind of whoever? Like how do you decide that? I, we try to mix it up. Mm -hmm. um, I get uh, references from the other guys in the committee who so give me references and other people and I just kind of go through and see where they all fit yeah. <clears throat> schedule-wise if we can get them all in there. And then uh, we try to get a little bit of everything. So we got some country, we got some jazz, some blues, some rock. So it's a pretty yeah. good variety. It's a good mix, for mm -hmm. sure. And so you had mentioned that there's going to be some food trucks and stuff like that there. Mm -hmm. What what else is going to be kind of a part of that event? Yeah. Definitely. So uh, we some of the food trucks that we actually are going to have that the first two weeks um, on on our list are Duncan's Barbecue, Arthur's Pizza, Rosita's, Lemon Love, uh, Snowy Bus, and, and Peppa's. So we've got uh, quite a few food trucks to choose from the first two weeks, and and then it'll probably change thereafter. So mm -hmm. um, some of the other things in past years we've had um, a bicycle rodeo there for kids to, to ride their bikes around. Cool. Uh, we're moving the stage this year, so we don't that, that might not be a part of it this year. Mm -hmm. Um, but mostly, I mean, we have a huge grass area, and so you've got kids just playing around and running around. 
uh, and then the other half is like more of a hardscape area where people put their chairs and so just uh, a lot of running around for kids and family friendly event um, music and you can come and go as you please so it's there's a lot of a lot of fun yeah for sure and um, the 18th Street Plaza is seems like such a great venue for this tell me a little bit about how that plays a role in bringing events like these um, to the community. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, the, the I mean, that's this has probably been an over five-year process right now of going on for the plaza, uh, and it's just getting better over time. Um, you know, we kind of, it's working out well because we're seeing what events are, are going well in the plaza, and we're able to see, you know, kind of what works best for the plaza. So we do have some, some new designs and plans to keep working on the plaza and making it better, but it's just a great location. It's, you know, kind of centrally located, uh, there's a lot of parking nearby. We've got a lot of par public parking lots, so there's plenty of access to it. Uh, and it's just, it just seems to be just a great spot to, to have these events. So, and it, it can hold a lot of people in there too. So That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so tell me a little bit about um, why events like Bands on Broadway are so important for small community, for downtown area, for local businesses. Um, what makes it important for the Definitely. guys? Well, even, I mean, pre-COVID, we've had tons of people coming, mm -hmm. but I think it's it's even more important now, um, especially with kind of the, the year that everyone's been through. Everyone's looking to get outside. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've been told for the last year is, is to be in open spaces and outdoor, and so th these events are perfect for that. For sure. uh, there's a lot of space, there's a lot of air, um, it's just, it's great for, for the community to have events like this. Um, you know, young families and things like that, they, they thrive and live for things like this. It's a, a quality of life thing um, mm -hmm. to have events like this locally, and, and not just one time. Uh, we had Cinco de Mayo for the first mm -hmm. time this year, which is a great event, but, you know, this is something all, all summer long. Right. Um, so to be able to have it, you know, constantly and year after year, it's, it's a huge benefit to the city, so. I think one of, the whole, one of the main ideas was just to get people to come downtown Scotts Bluff mm -hmm. because I remember thinking every year there's stuff going on all around. During the summertime, mm -hmm. you got events like in Gearing, you've got them around the area of the Fair Mitchell, the fair, mm -hmm. but not much in Scotts Bluff. So we thought, you know, get something in Scotts Bluff, we're going to get people to come and see what's downtown Scotts Bluff. So. Yeah, for sure. Are there other events um, that we should be looking for or putting on our calendars this summer? I'm not sure. There, so the, the Downtown Scotts Bluff Association, actually they have a Facebook page. Uh, we, we do have a calendar um, for the Downtown Scotts Bluff Association that you can go check out the calendar. Uh, it's been printed out. Uh, it's it's going to be put out in um, Inspire and then also some other places. But Downtown Scotts Bluff Association has a Facebook page that has all these downtown events going for on. Sure. Um, there's uh, sidewalk sales coming up in July. Uh, there's some pop-up shops that are going to be going on for, for a couple weeks here throughout the summer. Um, and there's there's some really good stuff coming up. So Awesome. We should definitely have to keep our eyes out for it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, anything else that you guys want to add about Bands on Broadway or downtown or anything like that? No, just that it's a good family fun event. It's just for the whole family. Yeah. It's free to the public, you know, and just kind of... Want everybody to come down and have a good time. So for sure, definitely. Yeah, we're st I'm still looking for food trucks and sponsors. So uh, you know, if you're interested in being a sponsor for the event or, or have a food truck mm -hmm. um, or even a band, even though we're full this year, we're always looking for future years. You can contact Star Lale at slail at scottsliff.org or six three zero six two one three. And otherwise, yeah, it's a free event to the public uh, every Thursday starting June twenty fourth to August twelfth, six p.m. to nine p.m. at yeah. Uh, downtown Scotts Bluff. So. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming in and talking. Um, again, we had um, Jordan Dietrich with the City of Scotts Bluff and Richard Castro with Crossroads Music. I'm Olivia Weasler at the Star Herald. Thanks for watching.